All right, welcome to EECS 373, uh, I'm Alanson and Sample, and this module is how to read the ARM v7 reference manual. All right, so just to recap, we're in section one here. Uh, we already went through the instruction uh, set architecture, which really defined the structure of the Cortex uh, core. Um, and we're, later on, we're gonna go through assembly instructions, assembly program and binary interface. We don't have a lot of time to spend on, say, some, uh, going through each assembly instruction. So I wanted to take maybe 15 minutes or so to really dive into the reference manual so that you all had the skills and uh, the background necessary to uh, look through the reference manual and pull out information quickly. So if you see a new instruction you're not that familiar with, uh, you can get to it uh, and review it quickly. Um, so today we're going to go uh, through a deep dive through the manual. We're not going to look at everything. We're just going to look at one command. We're just going to look at the odd or the add command, and that's not because somehow I think uh, the add command is super important. I mean, of course it is, but it's because by showing you this particular command, we can learn about uh, how to look at the manual so that you can um, uh, do it on your own later. Uh, and then we'll end with a practice practice problem, which we'll uh, review in our discussion sections. All right, so as we uh, reviewed last time, uh, the thumb two architecture or the um, thumb two instruction set here defines four basic types of uh, instructions. We have arithmetic and logic instructions. Um, we have data movement structure instructions that move things in and out of memory or around the registers. We have uh, branching operations and compare operations, so uh, how we control the program. And then there's a bunch of miscellaneous um, instructions, uh, things like breakpoints for debugging, uh, wait events, uh, handling interrupts, uh, synchronizing data, these sorts of um, uh, instructions. Okay. So really what this module is, and um, you know, thankfully in some ways uh, having an online module allows us to dive a little bit deeper in some things. So uh, this really is this chapter A4. Um, and again, we're just trying to get it so you guys all have the background to be able to use this thing, this reference manual successfully. Um, there's also the ARM and Thumb2 instruction, uh, or quick instruction reference card. Uh, this is good to have uh, printed out when you're using, when you're doing your labs. Um, also, we often give it a, uh, out on tests and exams. So having, being able to use this card quickly uh, is, is a big value. So I suggest kind of looking at these two as a pair of documents uh, that you should be familiar with. All right, let's dive in. Um, uh, there's, uh, we're gonna look at uh, in a particular instruction here, but there's a general philosophy to them. There's a label, uh, um, a mnemonic, an operand, and a command. So let's take an example of that. A label is just a point in memory where this uh, command is stored. Um, now, labels can be, um, as we'll see when we look at the uh, module on um, assembly programs, they can essentially be undefined or uh, a, a pointer, essentially, to an unknown location. But So it might have a little, little word like start or end or a loop could be the name of your function. Uh, we'll look at that later, but here it's just a point in memory. Um, then we have the mnemonic. So this is supposed to be uh, three characters that give the humans some understanding of what this command does. And so most of the time you can probably guess what it is, but there's a whole bunch of commands that, you know, you just have to look up. We have operands. Usually the uh, first um, value, the first operand is the destination register. Now, there are also a bunch of uh, ARM instructions don't have any destination registers. So it's not always the case, but that's usually what, what it is. Um, then you have one or multiple operands. So in this case, it's the first uh, source operand, the second source operand, uh, and then we have a comment. So here this instruction takes the value this in register two plus the rat value in register three, adds them together and puts it in register zero. So um, how many encodings do you think there are for add? Well, you can already see that there's an add immediate, which means you can add a constant value in a that's immediately available to a register value. And there's four different encodings of that, and some of those have multiple encodings as well. 
Um, there's add register, which is focused on taking different registers and adding them together. There's multiple encodings in that. Um, there's also a whole subset of ads that are specifically for the stack pointer. So there's stack pointer immediates and stack pointer registers. So in total, there's 17 different instruction codings just for add. And boy, that kind of is a little puzzling, right? This is a pretty fundamental thing. You're just gonna take two numbers, add them together and stick them somewhere. Why are there so many different versions of the same instruction? Um, so we'll make this a worksheet question for you. Uh, so, you know, uh, go to Gradescope, open it up um, and answer the question, why are there so many versions of the same basic instruction? In fact, it's not just add. There are lots of instructions that have many, many different encodings. Why would the architects of the ARM Cortex processors you want all that overhead. It's a lot more instructions that have to be decoded. Um, you know, it's a lot more to handle. So what's the big advantage? Why have they gone through and uh, implemented it this way? So this is a good time to pause the video, go fill out that answer, and we'll discuss it in the discussion section. All right. So um, here we're going to try to make sense of the reference manual. So say you were asked to, to look up or you needed to look up the add command. Um, here is uh, what you'd see in the reference manual. Um, essentially it says, okay, add register. So it's the register type instruction. This instruction adds a register value with an optional shifted register value and writes the result in a destination reg register. It can optionally update the conditional flags based on the result. So even that description, yes, all those words made sense, but I don't yet know how to actually use this information to that's written in this diagram here. So let's kind of dive into this so that uh, you all have the background about how to make sense of this, uh, this documentation. Um, and here's the page number uh, for this particular instruction at the bottom if you, need, if you want to follow along. Okay, so let's get started. Some things we know pretty easily. So uh, we're gonna look here. This is the actual command. If you're going to write it out in assembly, this is the command structure that you would have, and this is how you can convert it into binary if needed. Okay. So first we have the mnemonic. It's pretty easy to understand, right? Uh, immediately obvious here, this is an add uh, instruction. Uh, then we have this optional S. Uh, parameter, and this can update the application program status register, um, which is kind of interesting. What, why do they add this in here? Uh, and this, if you're going to instantiate this, this is the S in the binary that you would use. So uh, the conditional flags are basically the result of the ALU, right? So they're the, they're the peripheral flags that can come off of the ALU. So if you add two numbers together, and it happened equals zero or it's negative flags get set and so you uh, or uh, the pro or the um, compiler uh, if that's necessary can add the s at the end of the add um, command to tell the alu to set those flags or basically update the application uh, program status register uh, with that information and that's uh, super useful if you want to do things like branching, right? You want to go and branch when two things are equal or, z or zero or whatever the case may be. Maybe it overflows and you want to know about that. These branching functions uh, are, or these conditional flags are super, super useful to use. Um, in general, uh, the application program status register is one of the core registers um, that you will need to know for this class. Um, here's the the uh, the location in the data sheet. Here's the module that they write about that. Um, and it's important to know which each one of these fields does um, for a variety of reasons. All right. So uh, moving on, we have this uh, next, we have this bracket or uh, the C value here. And this is conditional execution. This is, these are IT blocks. This is not a major focus of this class. I, I don't think you'll come, you may not come across it unless you see it on your projects, but it's good to know what IT blocks are, uh, just so you have it kind of in the back of your head if you ever see them in the job, in your jobs there in the future, or 473, they come up and it's good to know what IT blocks are. So, IT blocks um, are a special instruction that basically says any, the subsequent 
uh, so you write this instruction and it tells the, the assembler, or it tells the CPU, that the, the following instructions are conditional, right? And they're conditioned based on a bunch of uh, mnemonic extensions here, okay? So you could have something conceptually equivalent to a case statement that says, if this condition is meant, uh, do this, uh, execute this instruction, this instruction, not that instruction, but this instruction, right? So it's a, a useful way, uh, uh, a useful tool when uh, writing uh, compact programs. So anyways, so it's good to know these exist. Normally what you do is you would have to, if you have these conditionals that you want to meet, you use the IT block to set it up. The next four in instructions uh, would be conditional. And to set the conditions at which those instructions would be met, you'd use this table here. So you could have not equal or not equal or carry or carry clear. Any one of these uh, conditions could be met to run that instruction. Okay. Um, so moving on, we have a dot W here. Uh, what is this? Uh, so here, this is a this is telling. This is a way to tell the assembler that you want this instruction to be wide. Now, um, when you are just writing the code, uh, or the assembler can make a decision whether this would be a 16 or 32 bit instruction, and there may be some reasons where you want to define. That this should be a wide or a narrow instruction. Um, and so you can state when you write that assembly line, there should be dot n or dot w, and the assembler will try and compile that instruction into a 32-bit or 16-bit value. And if it isn't able to do it for whatever reason, um, it will throw an error. So you could imagine if you were really trying to optimize your code for size, you could try and tell everything to be a dot n and then see the uh, functions that failed at that. That's one example. Okay, uh, moving on, we have uh, RD. So this defines, this is the destination register. This is operand one in that location. We have this, the uh, second uh, operand. Here's a source register. And then we have a third operand, which is another source register. But it has a special characteristic here, as we read about before, that it can be optionally shifted. Um, so let's take a look at that. So here, this is, uh, this is denoted by the RM. Uh, we have the ability to shift RM before it's added to the next value by some value. So here we could look at, uh, we could look at type as a variable and the immediate three and the immediate two are ways we can control that shift. Um, and it, it's not, uh, we can, we'll talk about this line in a second, but here what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the immediate two and the immediate three, concatenate, to, concatenate them together to make a five bit value. And this tells you what the concatenation order should be. So uh, you'd follow, uh, you'd follow uh, the, the data sheet, um, to figure out how do you set, you know, the, the types. Uh, oops, here we go. So here are the, the types and the, the bit width. So uh, here's the encoding. If it's zero, zero, you're not going to do a shift. There's a logical shift left, logical shift right, arithmetic shift, um, different versions here uh, that you can choose from. And then it shows you what the five bit encoding should be. Uh, how much should that uh, value be shifted? All right. Um, then, okay, so that's mostly, you should be able to define all of these lines here. And then you should also pretty much be able to fill in any one of these bits as well to figure out what the um, uh, binary value or hexadecimal, hexadecimal value in uh, memory would be. We also have a bunch of caveats or conditions that may need to be met. Um, so here it's saying, uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna mess, the destination register is 15. And this one says, if the de destination register is 13. So it's good to remember what's, what's important about, or what's special about R15 and R13. So if we go back to our register definitions, we see here that um, we have the general purpose registers R0, R12, and then we have these three special registers. So we have 
R13 is the stack pointer, R14 is the link register, and R15 is the program counter. So they have special connotations. And so um, essentially what they're saying is if you mess with these things, there's probably better functions. So here we say if RD is 15 and you set the status update uh, register to, to one, meaning that you're going to upstate, update the uh, application specific or application status registers, um, then you should use this command, CMN, uh, the register version of that. There's a better command to use. Likewise, if your uh, one of your source registers is 13, uh, then you should probably use the stack plus register. It's likely that those functions are better optimized for the job than uh, this particular add command. Hmm. Uh, this line explains to you what the um, type um, of the different variables are, right? So here the destination are uh, the destination or all the operands here, the destination, the source, the two source registers are unsigned integers and the set status flag is a one bit binary value. We already talked about um, the, the shift uh, values here, a shift in type as well as the mount. Um, it's important to remember here is that this concatenation is not always linear. It's not always the case um, that you're going to concat concatenate that larger value linearly from 5, 6, 7, or 5, or 6, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15. It could be swapped the other way. You might have multiple in there. And so it's good to keep track of how the concatenation is telling you to order those bits. And lastly, uh, if your destination register is 13 or 15 or um, or your source operands are 15 or 13 and 15, then things could be unpredictable. And um, that's this warning you that, yeah, if you go and use an add command to inadvertently update the program counter or the stack pointer, bad things are going to happen. Your program's going to do something. Um, so it's kind of a warning to you. Uh, it's not like you could never do it. It's just that you better do it exactly right. And there's probably better ways to do it. All right. So moving on here. Um, so we're going to give you a question for grade scope. Um, I want you to figure out what the correct encoding is for this command. So this is uh, move s r0 r8. Um, so here is the entry uh, for a move. This is a, uh, and I want you to go through and figure out what the proper encoding is and uh, report it in grade scope in hex. Um, all right. So you can pause the video, do that now. We have one more slide here. All right, to recap, um, the goal here is that you should be able to skim, uh, or you should be able to skim uh, the, the reference manual, basically understand what information is in there um, so that you can quickly look up instructions or other ISA related info. Um, this is not, the reference manual is not intended to be source for learning about the ARM processor. It's not like you're going to read it like a textbook and then magically be able to understand all aspects. Um, the thing is that this is really just a instantiation, like a written instantiation of the instruction set architecture and is really only intended for, um, for referencing. All right, so with that, I hope you have a better understanding of how to use the manual. Uh, you won't be intimidated by the arcane and kind of crazy formatting of some of the instructions, and I hope you'll be able to get the information you need uh, out of it. Thanks.